Let's move on to this equation. Now u depends on time. Very different from this. This is a snapshot in time. How is something distributed in time? And even though in, at a moment in time, at a particular moment, now. So even though there is no time here, it's still a partial differential equation because there's both x and y and a domain instead of a straight line. But now here, we, now there are three variables if you think of this as being your domain, x, y, and t. So now this is an evolution. It starts somewhere and then begins to evolve. And how it evolves depends on the spatial derivatives. The rate of evolution depends on the spatial derivatives. Okay, I have lots of things to say about this. First of all, where would an equation like this arise? Well, an equation like this arises when you try to describe how the temperature distribution settles to its equilibrium. So when it's at equilibrium, it'll satisfy the snapshot equation. But if it's not at equilibrium, for example, suppose that in a moment the radiator was turned off, then all of a sudden the room will start cooling until it probably reaches uh, some kind of average between what the temperature is outdoors and what the temperature is in the hallway and there will be a smooth gradient. That will satisfy Laplace's equation, but at the initial moment it won't because the temperature started changing. It's going towards that solution, but it's not harmonic at any moment. It will be harmonic eventually. So what this equation describes is evolution towards the equilibrium distribution. Evolution towards this distribution of temperature. And what it says is something very naturally. You could, you could all get behind this. It says the rate at which it happens is proportional to the degree to which every value is different from the average of its neighbors. Right? If, if the end goal is to average it out and be completely averaged out in the end, then being proportional to the degree to which it's not true, the rate of going there. Get, I'm getting very wordy, but you get it, right? It t makes total sense. And the one thing I would check mentally, it's easier to do it for yourself instead of me helping you, uh, to, talking you through it, is whether this should be a plus or a minus. You know, is it the degree to which it exceeds or the degree by which it trails? But the plus sign is very right here, and that's the most important thing. So, what do you think this equation is called? It's called the heat equation, because, of, because the intuition for what this, it describes is perfect. Heat equation. Now, I never wrote Laplace's, so I won't write heat. This is the heat equation. One thing we know about heat is that it doesn't overshoot. Right? The heat won't go, you know, oh, the cold is coming from there, so I'll get overshoot and get colder than it is in the street, and then slowly come back to the average. Right? That's not something that temperature does. It does not overshoot. And there will be in a moment an ODE analogy that you'll say, oh yeah, that's analogous. So we'll get to that. But let's talk about the kinds of boundary conditions that this requires, and initial conditions. Well, in terms of the boundary conditions, it requires the exact same thing as this. You will want to know where my arm is and what the temperature on it is if you want to describe everything accurately. You will, know, you will want to know either the temperature of the wall or the rate at which heat penetrates the wall. You will once again want to know what happens on every boundary. But you will also want to know where the whole thing started. Of course, it needs to start somewhere. This describes an evolution, and for any evolution, you will want to know where it started. And so you will say the temperature distribution in the initial moment is this function of x and y. And then given the boundary conditions, which, by the way, may depend on time. Right? I might be moving, and you might still want to be able to describe the temperature distribution. So the boundary conditions here may depend on time. And then it won't necessarily be settling to an equilibrium, because if I keep doing this, it will never settle to an equilibrium because I keep changing the boundary conditions. So boundary conditions can be very much time dependent. And so I think you would agree with me in a way 
that this equation is more complicated than this equation because there is another ingredient. There is time, there is initial condition, there is an initial condition, there is time dependent boundary conditions. More complicated problem, more complicated everything, there's more of everything. But logistically, this equation is actually simpler. I once again would submit that here you would be at a complete loss on how to start approaching solving the system. And here you wouldn't have such a problem because this is analogous to an ODE. Remember why I said why ODEs were easy? It's because you start somewhere and it tells you where to go. Well, this system also starts somewhere, the given initial condition, and then starts evolving. You will just say, oh, OK, I know if I start right here with this temperature distribution, I know what it will be in one second. I will just take this particular point. I will evaluate the Laplacian, so I'll evaluate the partial derivatives. I don't care how you do it with the thermometer or numerically or you're given an analytical function, nobody cares, but you'll find the Laplacian and then you'll change u by the Laplacian times your small time step and you'll roll forward, okay? And so you know what to do. It's, uh, it's in some ways not as tricky. So. That's the heat equation, and it will end up, if the boundary conditions don't end up on time, at the equilibrium configuration. So this is basically an equation for relaxation. Something starts and it's not equilibrium, and then it finally settles to the equilibrium state. That's all this equation does. And you can kind of see that when the function reaches the point where its Laplacian is zero, evolution stops, right? Because now the equation says time derivative equals zero. So it's all about movement towards the equilibrium where the equilibrium is, is characterized by the Laplacian equals zero. So that's the heat equation.